Welcome back to Pierce Laboratory. We are here yet again with Nathan and we are going to look at fuses. Fuses are simply fancy wires and um, in my own words I tend to think of them as slay queen wires and um, you may be wondering why that is so and in just a moment we'll be able to cover that in this entire video and so to give you the layout of how this video is going to flow we need to talk about one uh, how resistance varies with the change in the cross-sectional area of uh, this is actually delta of the conductor and uh, that will help shed some light further on as we go on and then uh, we are going to look at the concept of uh, heat and as such we mean energy and uh, of course this would imply some concept of work and then three we are going to look at uh, the concept of uh, melting point all these help us understand what the fuse is and the concepts that underlie the functioning of fuses and god willing we'll look at um, sizing uh, fuses so that you may know what that means and then uh, from that we shall proceed anyway so let's get started after looking into sizing fuses we all know that fuses actually happen to be in plugs so we'll introduce you to plugs and now this becomes almost the part of the practical repair lessons and uh, as such let us begin with uh, how resistance changes with uh, change in cross-sectional area of the conductor so you know that we were representing resistance by the letter r change is usually represented by delta which is a sort of like triangle and then a is my area i am using that to sort of enable the understanding now before i proceed far i think it's only right that i show you a sample fuse and you can look at this this is a sample fuse and this helps uh, regulate the maximum current that can flow through a conductor by burning out in case that is exceeded this right here is also a fuse and uh, this is rated for 13 amperes that helps you know that you shouldn't put this in a place that you want current higher than 13 amperes to pass this will blow out further on in this video we shall teach you what that is and what's the main function of a fuse now this one i think it's inscribed somewhere there i don't know whether you will be able to see that but uh, here they say it's rated for i think 1.5 amperes very hard to see but that's the nature of fuses more so in domestic appliances now we want to understand the thing but uh, to understand how this thing works we are going to go step by step as introduced at the beginning of the video and uh, stay with me until the end it will help you a lot because we are building concepts as we show you some real life scenarios of physics in play and this will aid you in learning how to repair from first principles anyway so nathan was asking me what cross-sectional area means because we are looking at uh, how resistance uh, this uh, resistance how do we write it resistance mm -hmm. how this varies with cross-sectional area of the conductor now in previous videos when we covered wires we actually uh, talked about uh, most wires and in general usage most wires are actually drawn out uh, cylinders so when you look at it critically it's usually a length of cylinder and this cylinder is metallic so current flows through it and then comes out from the other end when i say cross-sectional area is that face of the conductor that is perpendicular to the direction of flow of current so this area and since um, 
most of these conductors are actually cylindrical we know that that area would be the area of a circle so the cross-section area of a cylinder um, will always be a that's the formula for the cross-sectional area or the area of uh, the circle mm -hmm. I think you guys know that okay in terms of radius it is pi r squared so the reason why I have written pi d instead of pi r squared is because it's much easier to measure the diameter of a wire which in high school is done by a micrometer screw gauge and I think that is normally taught on how uh, micrometer screw gauge is normally taught <laughs> gauge uh, it's normally taught uh, in all level how to read that scale but with recent advancements um, there are those that have automatic digital reading anyway that was a little of a detour it's not what we are talking about right now here we are going to talk at how area affects the resistance of wire or how the resistance of a wire would increase now you remember that uh, in the previous video we gave the analogy that resistance is uh, the opposition to flow of current and we gave a scenario where uh, the uh, there's an entrance and it's manned by soldiers and uh, you have to pass through there and uh, if that place is not supposed to be entered then the soldiers would stop you from entering the more the soldiers the more effective they are at stopping people from entering but if there's only one person then more people are likely to pass through so anyway so at this point I think let me say that resistance will increase I'm just using symbols for the sake of being able to uh, right quickly as I talk resistance will increase when the area reduces just uh, look at a conductor there it would be a pipe of water yeah and the bigger the pipe the more water will pass or what will be received on the other end water representing e electrons because in electricity it's electrons that are flowing so the wire acts like a pipe through which the electrons would flow so the bigger the wire or the bigger the diameter of the pipe the greater the water that will flow or the greater the current that will flow through it so I just needed to tell you that uh, when area increases then the resistance will decrease and that is a general rule of thumb it's, it's just common sense eh? because there's more available path for electrons to flow so that's how the increase in cross-sectional area of a wire would affect uh, the resistance so bigger wires or wires with bigger diameters have a lower resistance than wires with small diameters that's one thing that i wanted to let you know uh, for now so we have looked at how the resistance of a wire varies with the change in the diameter or cross-sectional area of the wires so i will use cross-sectional area and diameter interchangeably because of course when diameter increases cross-sectional area increases now in the physics language or notation we would say uh, resistance is inversely proportional to area so that's how we would notify denote it in uh, the physics sense or in notation that means when area increases the resistance reduces in other words, when you divide one by a much bigger figure, definitely the result is much smaller, which result is the resistance. Um, that said, we look into the next thing, which is the idea of uh, 
heat and energy now um, in electricity you will have noticed that basically what's happening uh, when any device is running we are simply converting one form of energy into another form of uh, energy we're just uh, changing forms so the source of electricity is usually either dry cell which would be chemical energy uh, hydro electricity which uh, in itself is just a uh, kinetic energy from running water which is converted into flowing current and so on and so forth now since we are supplying energy usually what happens is that if uh, current which we denote with a capital I is flowing through a conductor definitely that will that that that, that, that energy will do work and that work will be experienced in form of uh, okay so that uh, energy or work that energy converted into work will be experienced as uh, heat energy in a sense what I'm trying to tell you is that um, every time current is flowing through a conductor there is actually heat given off I was going to say dissipated but that's a very complicated word so heat is given off now we need to understand how this heat is related to uh, the electric energy that we have been given now at times electric energy sources like we have mentioned in previous videos is uh, the sources is indicated by a potential difference like a voltage source and um, this voltage source is what normally provides the energy that we are supplying to the device in this case through the wire and the result is that heat will be generated and we know that voltage is current times resistance that dot simply means times i could not put it there it's still the same thing and uh, now in electricity we know that in this case i'm going to look at heat being the work that is being done that is heat is given off when current flows through a conductor now because we are looking at heat and heat is a form of energy we will represent energy by e and that e will be given by it's normally when you multiply the current times the voltage that is supplied times the time for which the voltage is applied you get the amount of uh, heat energy that is produced now you remember that V is actually equivalent to current times resistance so when we replace this we will end up with current times now we are replacing V V is also current times resistance times time so I times I gives us I squared and then R T so this is usually the heat energy that is given off when electricity is passing through a wire so in other words if i drew a dry cell that is one cell i remember the symbol of a dry cell and then we just connect its positive back to its negative terminal current will flow from the positive terminal down to the negative terminal and when that current flows remember we said that wires actually have resistance in as much as it's very small and this is current flowing and uh, this dry cell is providing us a potential difference which is measured in volts now the cell provides a potential difference that potential difference uh, causes current or electrons to flow through this wire uh, but that wire has a resistance that's why we are coming up with this relationship so if that current keeps on flowing we expect this wire to become hot and uh, 
becoming hot implies that heat is being given off. Now, how would you calculate the amount of heat that is given off? That would be multiplying the current twice and then multiplying it by the resistance times the time for which we have kept this wire connected to the battery. So that's the heat that will be given. Now, that brings us to the next subject, which is going to be melting point. And uh, if you guys have been able to study, I think it's still part of physics under the topic of heat, uh, melting point is simply the temperature at which uh, any solid turns into liquid. And uh, that's what we will call the melting point, usually in degrees centigrade. And um, uh, so, since we are looking at uh, fuses, which we are saying are simply giant pieces, okay, fancy pieces of wires, and then we also say that when current flows through wires, we end up with the heat being produced because of the resistance that the wire has. Right? Are we still together? Yes. Yeah. Now, uh, but remember the fuse or the wire used as a fuse is a metal. And a metal, <laughs> look at me spelling metal, and a metal also melts. Hmm? It melts. It does melt, believe me or not. Only that you have to give it too much heat for it to start melting. Uh, I'll give you an example of some of the melting points of certain metals. So, um, for example, we have copper. Copper melts at uh, uh, 1,084 1, degrees centigrade or Celsius. Now, I am interested also in the melting point of uh, lead and that of tin. I don't know whether any of you guys can guess that. Can you? Anyway, tin has a melting point of 231 degrees Celsius and then um, lead itself has a melting point of 327 degrees Celsius. Right? That means when we heat up this metal up to that temperature, it will stop to be a solid. It will become like how you would pour it, you pour porridge or water. Then that is what we mean by melting point. So now that we have talked about melting points of metals, fuse wires are designed to melt when we exceed its uh, current rating. So we gave you an example of the fuse that was rated uh, rated uh, 13 amperes and uh, since it is 13 amperes for instance uh, our fuse here which was rated for 13 amperes that means if we give it a current yeah that is more than 13 amperes it's supposed to melt and break yeah melt and break such that uh, no current keeps flowing through it so and why should it do that the idea is that uh, a fuse is supposed to protect uh, your appliance or electronic device from being blown by excess power. That is one. If the supply side exceeds 13 amperes, the fuse is supposed to burn out and protect the device that you're giving power. Two, which is almost a secondary function, more so if you're dealing with uh, alternating current, AC. That is the normal electricity you get from your socket, it's alternating current. Now, should the live wire touch the metallic body of the device and you're lucky that the metallic part of the body is connected to the earth, this will cause very high current to be drawn 
and uh, the fuse will blow in that circumstances so that maybe it will protect you from being shocked by electricity but the purpose of the fuse is to protect the device from excess supply of current and that's the purpose of the fuse now all right and that we've said that now um, what i have actually noticed uh, in fuses the wires that are actually used are not always pure metals it's actually normally some alloy of sorts now the commonest example is actually an alloy of lead and uh, tin i think you guys know what an alloy is this is just a homogeneous mixture of two metals and the purpose is to lower the melting point so we know that lead melts at uh, 327 degrees Celsius and tin melts at 231 degrees Celsius and uh, when we mix the two metals to form the alloy of lead and tin we end up with a low melting point alloy I think this melts at uh, of uh, 220 degrees Celsius which is lower than each of them individually so the mixture melts at a lower temperature now that's the kind of material that would be used in a fuse I do not know whether I should go into sizing a fuse but uh, I'm just going to highlight just a few principles in sizing a fuse uh, that means we are going to look at uh, one we know that uh, the resistance uh, tends to cause heat when current flows through it so solder, so solder is used as a fuse wire uh, because it has a high resistivity or high resistance uh, so i'm going to use those words resistivity and uh, it has a low melting point that is the whole point because the idea is that when uh, sorry for the repetition is that when uh, current exceeds the limit of that fuse wire that fuse wire is supposed to heat up and melt and break the flow of current from the source to the device so it has to protect the device now that means um, um, since we said, uh, uh, or we said, uh, uh, we talked about resistance of the wire, comma, we talked about the heat that is generated, comma, and then we talked about melting point, um, comma, that would mean we will now talk about uh, um, specific heat capacity. I don't know whether you guys have heard of the concept of specific heat capacity. What would it be called? Specific heat capacity or just heat capacity. But this is the more important one, specific heat capacity. Okay, this is a concept that you may study in heat if the curriculum still contains heat as a topic. But the idea is specific heat capacity is the amount of heat that would be required to raise the temperature of uh, one kilogram of that material by one degree degree Celsius but anyway I am not going to go so much into heat capacity but what is happening is uh, since we said energy let me write this in red because blue will make, uh, green will make it a bit monotonous. Since we said energy is uh, current squared times the resistance times time. That's what we said, right? Yes. Okay. So we assume that the resistance of that wire is constant because we have used a certain thickness of that wire. And therefore, when the current passes through it, 
uh, it is squared multiplied by resistance and the time that it passes. So this will be creating heat and that heat, depending on the specific capacity of that metal, will start raising the temperature of the fuse wire. And when it raises the temperature of the fuse wire, remember the more the time, the longer the current flows, that means the time is increasing. So that is means heat is continually being generated and that heat that's continually being generated is building the temperature of that wire. Now, when that current is near the limit of the fuse wire rating, that means the current will cause the heat that is generated to be enough to increase the temperature of that wire to the point that it melts. And then when it melts, you, all, you know of course liquid can never stay in one place. When it melts, that means it will break. And when it breaks, current will stop flowing. So in sizing, what we do, we just play around with that resistance value. Hmm? With that resistance value. So if the resistance of the wire is high, yeah, that means more heat will be generated and then that means this wire will burn out easily. Yeah. Now, if we reduce the resistance, yeah, if it is low, that means this will take longer to build up heat or maybe never build up heat to allow it burn out. So normally in resistance uh, using in using uh, wires as fuses, uh, the cross-sectional area of the wire determines how much current that wire can pass without burning. That's why you'll see in the earlier fuse that I showed you, uh, where is that transparent fuse? Um, I hope you guys will be able to see. If I give it a dark background, will I be able? Let me try to zoom out, zoom in and focus. I don't know whether you can see through this, but there is a wire right there in the center of this. If if you look carefully, is that that thing right there? So it's joining this end those ends these are just points to allow you mount this in the circuit board now that wire is the one that will burn out you can see how thin this is yet this fuse is rated for 1.5 amperes so that means if the current that this fuse wire or this thin wire is uh, transferring exceeds 1.5 amperes that wire will melt and break that circuit or break that path so no electricity will continue to the other end and that such it will have performed its role as a fuse that's why i tend to call a fuse a slay queen wire it's very sensitive emotional you give it a lot of current it will give you tantrum and you won't like it but anyway it's also to the advantage of your device in this case if a slay queen gives you tantrums, you get to save your money. Now, um, what more could I say? I think I have covered most of that. And um, this is because I was talking about wires and uh, specifically conductors. Now, this having been said, uh, we have noticed that in most domestic appliances, fuses are actually located within plugs. And plugs are those parts of your appliance that helps you plug into the mains or connect to the source of electricity, which is your wall socket. For instance, when you look at this, this is a three terminal plug and I've unscrewed it. And when you look at it it's here, there is always that rating that uh, states the size of fuse that is used inside. I hope you guys will be able to see. Let me first try to drop down the uh, brightness. Will you be able to see? Okay. When I tilt it at that 
angle you can see that um, this fuse or the, sorry this plug has the fuse rating that means you shouldn't use it in a place where more than 13 amperes will be uh, drawn I will show you in the inside that the fuse is actually also rated for that and then it can be used where the main supply voltage or potential difference that can be created by the socket is 250 not more than that should be that or less now let's uh, open it uh, you just have to unscrew that and this will come apart now right there you can see that we actually have a fuse similar to the one i showed you earlier bridging these two points so the idea is that in a plug this conductor here this is a piece of metal that comes passes in the middle of this plastic and ends up here now from this point to that point what connects is this fuse which is rated for 13 amperes and then at that point is where the wire that goes to the appliance or device will be screwed it will be plugged in there and then screwed so current will flow from here through this fuse through that wire to that side it's always put on the live terminal in which case it's always indicated by the red color or brown of course the neutral uh, will just be connected directly this is a plug meant to be used in SC appliances uh, appliances that use SC voltage this is the earth that's to protect you the person from being shocked so that's the purpose of the earth the fuse is to protect the device the earth thing is to protect you the person using it and never take any shortcuts when dealing with safety both of you and protection of the device always make sure the fuse is there and then also always make the make sure the earth is connected there plants may work without them as long as it's power and flow but again to be safe or for your plants to be safe please do observe it that's something you never perform shortcuts in when doing repairs now having said that i need to uh, bring my multimeter because since we have introduced the theory of fuses and um, plugs i just need to show you also the, the common tests that you will do while dealing with the fuse uh, while dealing with the plug to know whether it's functional or it's the part that you need to change on a device so i have my multimeter and uh, you know that when you look at a plug and a fuse we are just talking about wires or giant conductors and when we are dealing with conductors conductors are just to connect one point to another so we are interested in continuity it is current flowing from one point and reaching the other end that's why on the multimeter we choose to do measurement of resistance and we know that uh, resistance of wires is usually uh, below or close to zero actually not below zero almost close to zero i made that uh, error in the previous video because below zero means it's negative but close to zero means it can be 0 0.1 0 0.2 0 0.0001 0 0 0 something like that now i set it in resistance mode measuring a maximum of uh, 200 ohms this is ohmeta setting and uh, as such if it was a wire assuming let me put these probes here probe to probe it will give me that value that is 0 0.6 and therefore since we say the fuse is a wire uh, let me begin with uh, this obvious one that we used earlier on um, I will put one probe at that end of it oh god it had fallen but we recover it let me increase my ISO back to where we are able to see i think that's that now i'm going to bring the probes of my multimeter down here uh, to the ends of this fuse and i want to prove to you that it surely will really resistance close to zero and uh, all right that's zero point uh, just a moment zero point six ohms so that shows you that this is just a wire so anyway that's how you would measure a fuse now also just to simplify your life i will put it in continuity mode now this continuity mode 
measures uh, resistances below 50 but it will show you the resistance value and also give you a beep so that you can both see and hear whether the fuse or the wire is broken or it is continuous let me just demonstrate with these two probes when i touch them you can see that it beeps but in continuity mode the, the lowest resistance value it can read is one ohm so it will just show us one ohm which the one is also close to zero anyways so that's that now let me put it on the fuse and you see that that will beep to notify you that this fuse this fuse is good it's kind of slippery so because it's cylindrical it tends to like to roll away and you can see it beeps and also gives me a resistance reading of one ohm similarly let me test that fuse that is in this plug that's how they come out so if you needed to replace it that's how you would remove it but to check whether it's faulty you just measure both ends it gives you a beep or gives you a resistance reading that means it's a continuous wire it's not yet blown out and uh, that uh, helps you so this one is easily replaceable now there are also others that look a little weird these are not my solder directly on the motherboard now this one is a blown one you can see that the glass this is actually supposed to be transparent but when the metal melted it melted with an explosion and fumes or yeah fumes of the metal coated the entire inside of this glass and makes it that opaque this is a blown fuse and this would be replaced actually this one helps you because you can actually see that it is blown so is also the case with this one you will always see that it is burnt out uh, if you can see the wire you can always see that it is broken or at times when it burns out it explodes and coats the inside of this glass with a suit so that's how you remove measure a fuse and replace it back now also uh, times because this is a plug we may need to measure continuity from that point to the terminal where the fuse is plugged so this is being done just to prove to you that this piece of conductor simply goes through the middle of this insulating plastic which is red and ends up that side so we hear the beep and it gives you a resistance of value that is one which is close to zero so you can also measure from this side to confirm that it is reaching after passing through the fuse and also up to that point same thing to prove to you that this neutral the conductor is coming straight to here i'll just put the two probes to the ends now so that uh, is also to teach you that uh, fuses are simply giant conductors and um, giant wires for that matter of course as we do repairs in the future you find different looking designs of fuses and uh, no matter what helps you to know that it's a fuse is if it is transparent you'll see a thin wire uh, or at times it will have a current rating that will help you suspect that it is a fuse and um, i think as we uh, keep learning together i will bring you some of the variations of fuse wires but in the back of your mind just know it's a conductor and the concept there is that it has to melt if the current exceeds the rating to stop it from flowing through the device such that it protects the device from burning out that's the whole essence of having a fuse a lot of people bypass this uh, because they don't want to buy a fuse but uh, unless you're good at uh, estimating and sizing the wires it becomes very hard for you to be able to just bypass here to there using a wire you may over estimate the thickness of the wire and it is letting through more current than the normal 13 that's where sizing of a fuse comes in in that you unable to find a fuse you you can use wires so you just get the strand of wire measure its diameter calculate its cross-sectional area there is actually a formula that allows you to calculate the resistance of the wire based on its cross-sectional area and uh, its uh, resistivity 
that's a subject for another day that's if you're now going into design but for repair purposes all you need to know is that how to measure a, a fuse that is burnt out how to put back the same rating of a fuse where to find the reading of the fuse that you need to replace it with and that's usually written on the fuse uh, thank you for watching hit the subscribe button let's meet in the next video sorry this was very long but feel free to comment in the comment section to let me know what you uh, need clarity on and um, yeah so I sign out and as usual I'm going to ask Nathan to give us a summary of what we've covered today <laughs> we need the summary. <laughs> okay, just a few highlights of what you think you've retained today. Um, for so we uh, are gonna start with the use of uh, of a fuse. It it breaks to break contact in case the current exceeds its a uh, its a uh, ex its usual current that it's rated for to break and uh, another thing we looked at uh, is how heat how to calculate the heat uh, to calculate the heat uh, All right, so uh, you guys, uh, that's me. We're making sure Nathan is being serious about this, but uh, <laughs> you can rewatch the video just in case you need to remember what has been covered. Subscribe, like, share, and return. See you.